Okay, if Steely Dan were around with Pro Tools, would they have ever finished a record? Probably a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there was something about when when you get hired to play on one of those records because I, I I didn't I would have loved to have but um, I know all the guys that did and and what was like you know and you know I think they dug the process of making people bleed for it because it's different than programming it right there's an a there's something I can't even articulate verbally that would explain what that must be it's kind of an X factor it's like you get four or five guys in a room with four different kinds of time feel where this thing becomes group time where everybody one guy might be a little ahead one guy plays a little back but somehow it falls into this thing and you can't, can't write it, it out and you can't rehearse it right matter of fact some of the worst things you can do is rehearse a, a record before you go in the studio and get all your good shit out of rehearsal it just they'd hire different rhythm sections and even doing the same song and they had the money to do this they spent their money on the records, you know. Right. They, it was their art. This is what they lived. They knew what they wanted, even if other people didn't understand it. I can't speak for Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, but I'm just from the, what I've heard and how much of a fan I am and what I listen to, and the way Jeff Bacar would talk to me about what those sessions were like. I think that that Larry Carlton told me uh, that when they oh, did he, when they did Asia that track, because somebody else played played drums on it the day before. And he walked in the studio and Steve Gabb was there the next day. He goes, I guess we're, and then he saw the charts. I guess we're doing that again. Yeah. And Do you know the Steve Gadd story? What, no, let's hear it. No, I hope Steve, don't be mad at me. Man. Maybe I'm getting this a little wrong, but the legend has it that Steve showed, and that was a 12-page chart, right. without doubt. I mean, of you, course. it's one of the greatest pieces of music ever written for popular music, if you will. Yeah. One of the greatest perform. Larry did the chart. Right. They went to Larry because Larry's massive ears. He's yes. one of the greats of all time. Larry yeah. Carlton, come on, man. Yeah. We sensei. give it up for Larry. I call yeah. him Sensei. Yes. Um, he had those charts, and I remember being up his pad, man. He's like, hey, you want to see the chart? And I'm like, yeah, man, let me see what that looked like. And he would write out the really important stuff the yeah. right voicings and the right voicings, the notation. hits that needed to happen. But you yeah. noticed on these charts, there was room. He came up with all of his parts, mm -hmm. those great, amazing, you know. Asia, da, 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 oh da, da, da. I mean, come on, so man. So good. You know, only he'd come up with something great. That's right. Like that, you know what I mean? So there was stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, those he would tell me stories about just what, what it was like. But Gad came in, and he was a little late. He was always late back then. You know, it was the funny, it was a joke <laughs> about the New York guys who were always coming four or five hours late, and we're sitting around getting paid for doing nothing, you know. That's how they did things in New York. We okay. Did. But anyway, long story short, I wasn't on the date, but this was told to me, guys were on the session. That he came in late and he was, you know, maybe had a little too much fiesta the night before. I mean, this guy's been sober for like 40 years. It was a long time. Ago, so, and I wasn't there, but this was told me. He looked a little like, oh, God, is this guy, you know. And, you know, Steve just <laughs> put the chart up. <laughs> They counted it off, and that was the take. Oh my God! It, they did one. Came to done uh, maybe one or two takes, but whatever it is, is the record. That solo was shit, and he's sight reading that. That's unbelievable. Man, Steve's one of the great. I spent a lot. I spent some time with Steve back in the day. I love. You know, he's. You know, we used to hang a lot. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's out with James Taylor and Clapton and all these guys. You know, one of the greats of all time. Besides Toto, some of the records, like Thriller, for example, you played. Mm. Yeah, so that's me Next. going. And all that. Well, I forgot. Right. They used to have just all. And uh, was the anything written on that? No. The, Michael had the, sang me the lick. Okay. But all yeah. They used to have. They had that going for like 45 bars or something like that. You know, I go, yeah. I said, that make it more interesting. I had to sell them on it, but they finally went for it. <laughs> uh, but then the, I played bass on it too. Okay. And then Eddie played the solo. But see, the lead vocal and the electric guitar solo were already done. There was another take of Beat It. And when Eddie did the solo, now there's- Yeah, what's the story on that? And okay, well, you know, did you I call did, him No, to come? I had nothing to do with it. Eddie okay. had already played on it. All right, so the, your part was already done. No, this is, Wait, okay, you don't know what right. happened. Okay, let's hear this. Michael and Quincy, they had done another take of it, apparently. Okay. 
and had Michael's, they had worked on Michael's vocals and they used to meticulously get like, you know, his vocals were quintupled at times. Okay. You know, but very slickly done by the genius of uh, Bruce Swedeen, the engineer. Yep. And Eddie, when they sent the tape up to Ed, it's, the, the, the ambig ambiguity lies is who cut the tape. Okay. It was Simpty Coat. Need I say anything? Oh I'll gosh. explain what that is. Explain that. Now, Don Landy would be too smart for this, but, and I originally had said, I think Don did it, and Don got like, I didn't do that. <laughs> Wait, explain Simpty Code for Simpty people that Code don't. Simpty Code was what, two 24-track tape machines back in the day when you were, after we were able to discover we could get more than 24 tracks with one machine, they were able to sync up two 24-track machines, which would give you 48 tracks, actually 46, because... Because you have the... the track 24 on both tracks had a Simpty code, which I believe was some sort of a permutation of a 60 cycle thing that would lock the machines. Yes. Now, like anything, like any other system like that, if you cut that, it will not lock up. That's right. So what happened was Ed didn't want to play through the section of the song that they wanted him to. So he cut the tape to cut, play the part that's now the record. Okay. So what happened was he did that, set that back to... Quincy and it wouldn't sync up. So we had Eddie's first generation and Michael's first generation vocals and a Simpty code. With the only thing else was on the track was a, was a Michael hitting a trap case on two and four. Blop, blop, oh and leakage God. through four or five takes of Michael's headphones singing the vocal where you could hear what the old track was. Oh my so God. So Quincy called me, Jeff Picaro, and an engineer named Umberto Gatica to go to Sunset Sound. Okay. And fix the track for him. He goes, you gotta make the track backwards to what you can hear on the tape because I'm not, I don't wanna do Michael's vocals again. I don't wanna transfer them oh because I wanna God. keep it first generation. And Eddie's so on this, you gotta make it work. So he called me, Jeff, we went down there, and Jeff, the magician that he was, he goes, we're like, how are we gonna do this? And he, Jeff goes, I'm gonna go out, and I want you to crank Michael's two vocal. Four. Oh, Michael's vocal, so, so I can, can hear, hear the bleed. And, and the two and four, and let me make a click. And he went out there with two drumsticks, and a mic, not like this, and went He made his own classic Jeff click that he would do with the drumsticks. Right. And I miss him so fucking much. He's the best. Um, and he and he got that together. He goes, I'm gonna let me go out and play the drums of this thing and, and get it done. So of course he goes out. I, it could have been the first, no more than the second take. It was he was done. He goes, okay, you're up. So once I knew that where the groove was at, I just my first initial thing, because Eddie was on it, and I heard the shit, I'm going, it's great. And I go like, I got a fucking, I got the Marshall. So wait, do you play I the, got the Marshall. So you had to re redo the rhythm tracks after Eddie yeah. put his solo down. Okay. Now my initial thought to do the really cranked up. You know, something like that. Yeah. Cranked up quadruple with Marshalls, because Eddie's on it. I figured, well, that's they're going for the rock shit. So I did that, and then I played the bass part to it, okay. which was easy. It's just the guitar part. It's not like I was doing Jocko Pastorius, for God's sake. <laughs> Bonehead bass I'm real good at. <laughs> but anyway, so we sent it back to Q, and they go, we love it, except it's, he goes, Lukey, it's too much. I got to get this on pop and R&B radio, and it's just too, it's too metal. You got to come back down. He goes, get that little Fender ears out. Don't turn it all the way up. Give it gas, but... And I said, oh, okay, I get what you mean. So I, I took it, I went back, and I just double-tracked it on two uh, with my uh, 59 bursts plugged straight into a modded, uh, Rivera modded me an old blackface deluxe that I used for years. Uh, anyway, I did that, and that was fine. Then I went down. They said, perfect. Come down to Westlake, and let's do the rest of the overdubs with Michael and me. And I said, great. So that's when we came up with the, you know... <laughs> and all that so stuff. So when Michael sang that first part, the, the, dun, well, dun, he heard that. That dun, was no, dun, no. Dun. Well, he had. Would he sing that to you, though? He used to sing his little demos, but okay. I never heard the demo. Okay. But but all. Of... That, that that was his riff, his vocal riff. He came up with that. Okay. And people wow. think if if I wrote that, we could have been on my space shuttle talking about this right. That's now. right. Red, I would have made. But you know, the same thing happened on Human Nature. You know, like I, I it was another B minor special. You know what I mean? Uh, Steve Picard wrote the song, great song, and he Beautiful had it lying song. around. Incredible song. And you know, his the story of how that all happened is one thing, but you know, 
They loved the song. They cut the whole song. Yep. They did all the stuff, and then Quincy called me in to do an overdub and okay. said, you got to make this funky for me. I got to get this. It's, it's too pop right now. It needs a little something. I need you some glue. And I and there was nothing written. He didn't, Quincy never wrote out parts for me, even though he's Quincy Johns. Yeah. You know, unless there was something really specific that everybody had to play. He just, I hired you to be you. And I heard the part. And the first thing that came out was, you know, not, um, I used to be really good at these muted, muted notes because I really, the thing you need to know is common tones. That's how you get together muted parts. When you play an R&B or anything, you're trying to find a little cool part that, that percolates in long, but you're not in anybody's way. I was really good at coming up with that stuff. And my studies helped me not only get the ear for it, but to understand, okay, I'm in the key of D minor. What, I mean, what are my common tones through these changes? Even though they're not exactly bebop changes where you're changing key, you still had to know your you do. basic yeah. thing, you know? So I, I just didn't. That makes a song. And, and all I had was B minor. That, that makes the song. Well, that's when I got hired. It wasn't because I could do all this, because, you know, I still can't do all this. 